Welcome to Creative Biolabs. Creative Biolabs is a leading custom service provider in antibody development and engineering. Our scientists bring state-of-the-art technology to support functional biomolecule development for infectious diseases. Today, we will discuss the mechanism by which viruses cause infectious diseases and Creative Biolabs technology for antibody and peptide discovery services against the viruses. Part 1. Virus of Infectious Diseases A virus is an infectious agent of small size and simple composition that can multiply only in living cells of animals, plants, or bacteria. The structure of the virus is very simple. The nucleic acid is surrounded by a protein coat known as a capsid. The combination of capsid and genome is called a nucleocapsid. The other membrane layer surrounding the nucleocapsid is called the envelope. In general, viruses get their lipid envelope from the host cell. Virtually all of them produce envelope protein that penetrates the envelope and serves as receptors. Some envelope proteins facilitate viral entry into the cell, and others have direct pathogenic effects. Viral genomes may be single-stranded or double-stranded, RNA or DNA, and may or may not use reverse transcriptase. In addition, SSRNA viruses may be either sense or antisense. The Nobel Prize winner, biologist David Baltimore, Device the Baltimore classification system. The Baltimore classification of viruses is based on the mechanism of mRNA production, which places viruses into seven groups. While the replication cycle of viruses can vary from virus to virus, there is a general pattern that consists of seven steps. Attachment. It is the first step of viral replication. Viral proteins on the capsid or phospholipid envelope interact with specific receptors on the host cellular surface. This specificity determines the variant attaches to the correct host cell. Penetration An unenveloped eukaryotic virus often gains entry via endocytosis, where the host cell is compelled to engulf the capsid, resulting in an endocytic vesicle. An enveloped eukaryotic virus gains entrance for its nuclear capsid when the viral envelope fuses with the host cell membrane, pushing the nuclear capsid past the cell membrane. Uncoding The viral capsid is removed and degraded by viral enzymes or host enzymes releasing the viral genomic nucleic acid. Transcription The transcription mechanism depends on the viral genome. DNA viruses usually use host cell proteins and enzymes to make additional DNA that is transcribed to messenger RNA, which is then used to direct protein synthesis. RNA viruses usually use the RNA core as a template for the synthesis of viral genomic RNA and mRNA. Synthesis the synthesis stage is largely dictated by the type of viral genome since genomes that differ from the cell's DSDNA genome can involve intricate viral strategies for genome replication and protein synthesis. Protein production is tightly controlled to ensure that components are made at the right time in viral development. Assembly The complexity of viral assembly depends upon the virus being made. The complex viruses often employ multiple assembly lines to create the different viral structures and then utilize scaffolding proteins to put all the viral components together in an organized fashion. Release The viruses, now being mature, are released by either sudden rapture of the cell or gradual extrusion of enveloped viruses through the cell membrane. The cell membrane is modified by the insertion of viral proteins, with the nuclear capsid pushing out through this modified portion of the membrane, allowing to acquire an envelope. 
The viruses that cause infectious diseases include but are not limited to SARS-CoV-2, HIV, SARS-CoV-2, Ebola virus, Zika virus, MERS-CoV-2, rabies virus, highly pathogenic avian influenza, hepatitis virus, dengue virus, enterovirus 71, and influenza virus. Creative Biolabs provides antibody and peptide discovery services against the above viruses. Part 2. Viral Pathogenesis Viral pathogenesis is defined as the mechanism by which viruses cause diseases. Viruses have different mechanisms by which they produce disease in an organism, which depends largely on the virus species. A simple view of viral pathogenesis is that viruses replicate and kill cells, thus causing disease. For example, the death of liver cells causes hepatitis. Death of enterocytes may cause diarrhea. Death of respiratory epithelial cells may cause severe respiratory tract disease. However, loss of cell function without death can also produce disease. During HIV infection, immunodeficiency is not simply caused by cell death. The virus also alters the function of some cells needed to maintain a healthy immune system. Signs and symptoms of the disease can also result from tissue damage caused by host immune responses. Inflammation, killing of virus-infected cells by the immune system, or deposition of immune complexes are examples. Of course, like any biological event, the disease is often a complex combination of direct damage by the virus in concert with host immune responses. Understanding viral pathogenesis, the mechanism by which disease develops, is an important consideration in developing effective treatments. Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites that are transmitted as inert particles. To infect its host, a virus must first attach to and affect cells at one of the body surfaces. Unless these potential barriers are bypassed by parenteral inoculation via a wound, needle, or the bite of an anthropod or vertebrate. The skin that covers the animal body externally has a relatively impairable outer layer of keratin, whereas the mucosal epithelial lining of the respiratory tract and much of the gastrointestinal and urogenital tracts lacks this protective layer. Similarly, in and around the eyes, the protective keratinized layer of skin is replaced by the non-keratinized epithelial lining of the conjunctiva and cornea. Each of these sites is the target for invasion by specific viruses. Virus replication may be restricted to the body surface through which the virus enters. For example, the skin or respiratory tract. Alternatively, the invading virus may breach the epithelial barrier and spread through the epithelial surfaces, blood, lymphatics, or nerves to cause a generalized infection or infection in a specific site. Viral shedding refers to the expulsion and release of virus progeny following successful reproduction during a host cell infection. Shedding of infectious virions is crucial to the maintenance of infection in populations. For viruses that replicate only at epithelial surfaces, the exit of infectious virions usually occurs from the same organ system involved in virus entry. In generalized viral infections, shedding can occur from a variety of sites, and some viruses are shed from several sites. The amount of virus shed in excretion or secretion is important in relation to transmission. Some viruses occur in such high concentrations that a minute quantity of virus-laden secretion or excretion can readily lead to transmission to the next host. Viral shedding can be through budding, apoptosis, and exocytosis. Viruses are transmitted from person to person, mainly through the following modes. Fecal-oral transmission occurs 
via the injection of contaminated food or water. The virus enters the body through epithelial cells or lymphoid in the gastrointestinal tract. Respiratory transmission occurs when viruses in the respiratory tract are expelled as droplets, such as influenza viruses and a severe acute respiratory syndrome and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronaviruses. The transmission may be directly from one individual to another or may occur through formities. Transmission of viruses via exchange of bodily fluids can result from blood transfusions, use of dirty needles, trauma, organ or tissue transplantation, sexual contact, or artificial insemination. The human viruses HIV, HBV, and HCV can all be transmitted via contaminated blood. A few viruses can be transmitted over long distances through the air, a process called airborne transmission. In airborne transmission, particle sizes are very small and remain suspended in the air for long periods of time. Many viruses are transmitted from one host to another, primarily via an insect intermediary, such as Stenga virus and Zika virus. Blood-feeding insects, such as mosquitoes, ticks, and midges are common vectors. Virus infection can cause a wide variety of potentially deleterious changes in the many different kinds of cells that occur in the host. The disruption of cellular functions, the induction of cell death or transformation, or the activation of an inappropriate immune response are all potentially manifested as a disease by the infected host. A variety of specific mechanisms have been identified that might in the future be potentially targeted for therapeutic intervention. General mechanisms of virus-induced cell injury and death include inhibition of host cell nucleic acid synthesis, inhibition of host cell RNA transcription, inhibition of processing of host cell messenger RNAs, and inhibition of host cell protein synthesis. HIV-1 is the etiological agent of AIDS in humans. There are 40 million people in the world currently infected by HIV-1. Curtailing the continued spread of HIV-1 infection will require an effective vaccine, which should ideally elicit both virus-neutralizing antibodies and cellular immune responses. Targets with highly conserved epitopes are likely to be more effective. The HIV-1 envelope glycoprotein spike mediates viral entry and is the sole target of neutralizing antibodies. The entry-mediating form exists as a trimer composed of three host receptor binding GP120 molecules, non-covalently linked to three GP41 transmembrane fusion proteins. The CD4BS epitopes are located at the interface of the GP120 inner and outer domains. Antibodies raised against this site are neutralizing antibodies elicited during natural infection that can compete with CD4 for binding GP120. The V2 site at the trimer apex is formed from the converging, sequence conserved regions of V1, V2 domain and a V3 loop. It is protected by densely packed glycans and the hypervariable loops V1 and V2. Epitopes in the MPER of GP41 are almost exclusively contained within a linear alpha helical stretch that links the transmembrane domain to the ectal domain of GP41. The MPER can be divided into an N-terminal and a C-terminal helix around a kink at position 674 used to define various overlapping epitopes. The N332 supersite is composed of a number of overlapping glycan-dependent epitopes. V3 epitopes lie structurally proximal to the V2 site and are the most well-described within the N332 supersite. Antibodies targeting V3 show a similar mechanism to V2 site recognition in that they access a minimal 8 residual peptide epitope between positions 323 and 330 via long CDRH3S. 
protein-protein interaction surfaces can exhibit structural plasticity. Structural and functional adaptability in the GP120 to GP41 interface would facilitate the maintenance of a functional EMV complex in the setting of host selective pressures that drive the rapid co-evolution of GP120 and GP41. Recently, more and more GP120 and GP41 interface B and ABS have been developed, such as 8 ANC195, PGT151, VRC34, 35022, and 3BC315. Creative Biolabs has developed a cutting-edge and in fact platform that employs different technologies for antibody peptide discovery for broad spectrum targets of viruses. With enriched experience associated with state-of-the-art facilities, Creative Biolabs focuses on neutralizing antibody development and functional peptide discovery for viral diseases to support diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Creative Biolabs employs different immunization strategies for antivirus biomolecular discovery, including membrane protein immunization, virus-like particles immunization, and DNA immunization. Membrane proteins are currently the most important class of therapeutic targets. Antibodies directed against membrane proteins for neutralization of virus infectivity are highly sought for therapeutic, diagnostic, and research purposes. Creative Biolabs has developed a series of cell-based systems and cell-free systems for virus membrane protein expression. The cell-based system can yield membrane proteins of interest from a recombinant plasmid in the diverse living cells, including but not limited to the E. coli system, yeast system, insect system, and mammalian system. The cell-free systems are derived from modified cellular extracts, exerting unique beneficial features for expressing many challenging targets, especially multi-pass membrane proteins or toxic proteins. Virus-like particles, or VLPs, display diverse target antigens in a highly multivalent format that dramatically increases their immunogenicity. Creative Biolabs has established a broad range of expression systems, including but not limited to the E. coli system, yeast system, insect system, plant system, and mammalian system. We have accumulated extensive experience in antivirus antibody development by using the VLP immunization strategy. DNA immunization permits in vivo antigen production avoiding the processes of immunogen synthesis and purification. In addition, these in vivo expressed proteins can maximally maintain the naive structures and go through appropriate post-transcriptional modifications. Based on DNA immunization, Creative Biolabs is able to develop high-affinity antibodies against the natural conformation of the target antigen which is a crucial feature for developing therapeutic and diagnostic antibodies. Key features and advantages of ant in fact platform include but not limited to PhD level scientists with extensive experience, cost effective and short turnaround time, broad spectrum targets, various strategies, diverse species available, high throughput functional molecule screening, a large pool of functional antibody peptide candidates. And lastly, we will introduce a few technologies related to antivirus antibody peptide discovery services. Creative Biolabs offers a wide range of strategies for B cell isolation. Fluorescent activated cell sorting has become one of the most accepted worldwide popular strategies in the identification and selection of B cells. For antigen-specific B cell selection in native antibody development, multi-parameter facts is commonly used by combining different fluorochrome labeled markers and antigens, or antigen-coded magnetic beads, and fluorochrome labeled antigens. By using facts, 
B cells in different stages of development and differentiation can be clearly distinguished. Laser capture microdissection can be a contact and contamination-free method for isolating specific single cells from a wide variety of tissue samples, depending on your requirements. Based on optical microscopes, coupled with a coaxial cutting laser and computer-assisted control, the LCM system can successfully capture and extract cells from tissues on the cap to procure pure populations of targeted cells from specific microscopic regions of tissue sections. Hybridoma technology is a classical and established route for generating specific antibodies. The technology begins with the immunization of test animals with an antigen of interest, and serum antibody titer is determined by enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Subsequently, the splint is aseptically removed and splenocytes are fused with myeloma cells to produce hybridoma cells. Hybridoma cells are then cultured in 96 watt plates in the presence of a hypoxanthin aminopterin thymidine selection medium for high throughput screening. Later, hybridoma cells producing desired antibodies are screened by conventional ELISA and novel nanoparticle probed immunoassay. Cell culture systems in vitro with specific monoclonal antibody cell lines are then subjected to mass generation by media selection shaker flasks, and bench-scale bioreactors. Phage display technology is another powerful tool in the discovery of antivirus biomolecules that can be widely used to select or isolate proteins, scaffolds, peptides, or antibodies with high affinity and specificity for targets of interest. Initially, the phage display library is incubated with targets immobilized on solid scaffolds. Specific library phages bind to target molecules, while the unbound phages are washed away. Then specific phages are eluded and amplified by infecting E. coli cells. After several rounds of selection, amplified clones can be sequenced and analyzed to obtain diagnostic and therapeutic agents with desired properties. The high-density peptide array is a new type of biochip that can be used to detect the binding sites of proteins and other proteins or substances. It is a research technique for systematic epitope screening of antigen candidates. First, obtain candidate proteins from the target organism, obtain known protein sequences from the database, and predict and select proteins with transmembrane helices and signal peptides. Then cut into all possible 5 mer or 8 mer lengths and direct the solid particles doped with amino acid monomers to the limited area of the functionalized glass substrate by a laser printer to complete the in situ synthesis of the peptide array. Next, we can analyze the antibody response triggered by the virus and discover new epitopes. For more details about Creative Biolabs antivirus antibody peptide discovery services and other anti-infective antibody engineering services, please visit our website or contact us directly.